Okay, we're gonna transition and talk about movies because as we know, Golden Globes are this Sunday. That's We've right. We've been talking a lot about this. We talked about Shape of Water on the show today, how you think it's gonna, cinematically, it's a beautiful picture, so it's probably gonna take a lot of those awards. We want Greta Gerwig, we want Lady Bird to sweep it. Yeah. What's going to happen? There's not gonna be a sweep this okay. year. If there was one, I would want it to be Lady Bird. Right. I love everything about that movie. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Sadly though, there's so many good movies this year mm -hmm. vying for it. Okay. Golden Globe it gets tricky because they divide up between comedy and drama. Right. And then even things that they pick for the comedy, you go, really? That <laughs> yeah, was that a comedy? Like, comedy? like The Martian was in the musical comedy last year. Right. right. And right. like, um, really? like there were funny moments, uh -huh. but what, <laughs> and who submits? When it comes to a film, who says, okay, I want to submit this, and because there's some laughter in it, I want it to be comedy. Like, From the studio? They have a pretty good idea of where the movie is going to sit, both publicly like and critically, drama, when they decide comedy. what they're going to extract from it. Okay, so now that that's happening, and we know that kind of we're we're kind of getting the lay of the land. Yeah, so we'll go down the list. Call okay. me by your name. Have you heard about this movie? Mm -hmm. I've heard of it, have not seen it. it. It's a coming of age gay love story that's incredibly oh. well done, set okay. in Italy. Beautiful <laughs> vistas. Dunkirk, uh, Christopher Nolan, always a shoe War in. War movie, from, right? Yep. Uh, no stranger to this, uh, Tom Hanks. Uh, and Meryl Streep and The Post, Spielberg okay. film. Yeah. The Shape really? of Water. Why haven't I heard a lot about that this year? Because it was super late in the game. Like, like the hype point all came like Christmas week when we were all buried and doing other stuff. And, and, and oh. during Star Wars, you know, it's hard to get air in the room when Star Wars is on. Because everyone wants to talk about it. Pretty much it's one of the movies that wasn't Star Wars. <laughs> so is Meryl going to get the award this year? I think she might get nominated when it comes time for Oscars, but I don't think she's going to win it. Okay. Uh, you also helped three billboards outside Ebbing, Missouri. Have you heard about this movie? No. no. Okay, so <laughs> it, it, it's nominated as well. It has great performances. I would put it in the genre of like Fargo. Remember uh -huh. Fargo? Yes, uh -huh. that was a good one. But I don't think it's going to take it. Lady Bird we've been talking about. Yeah. The Disaster Artist, which I talked about for three years before you the did. movie actually opened up. Yep. Love that movie. And a movie that when it came out, I don't think we said, oh, that's going to be nominated for Best Picture. But we all agreed it's one of our favorite movies of the year. Get Out nominated. Yeah, <laughs> yeah that was one of my favorites. I'll say Get Out and... Wait, Split was last year though, right? I barely saw it this year, but I- Oh, you finally Split, got around to Split. Yeah, Split was really good. You mentioned Bruce Willis this morning, how he's coming for this this next right. year. He's doing a remake of movies. Um, but he made an appearance at the end of Split, so I was hoping to get like a Split 2 this year, and it never happened. Well, the reason he made the end of Split, it's to because it's sh showing that it's a setup. It's an origin story for another movie. Oh. This is really smart, and we had to do some Google searching for right. that. Like, why is Bruce Willis in this? We know that it means it's a setup for something. Okay, keep going with this year, though. I want to really Now, was the director of Get Out nominated? Because some were saying that for the other award ceremony that he wasn't nominated, or Greta Gerwig, and that was a snub. So do you know more about that? Uh, yes, he was nominated okay. for this. And yeah, Everybody said, you know, for Screen Actors Guild Awards, they were surprised mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. that there was Sad no nomination words. there. Um, really quick, while you keep looking, David <coughs> Wong says, favorite movies of 2017. Number three, Lady Bird. Yeah. Number two, Atomic Blonde. What? And number what? one, Wonder Woman. Yes, Wonder Woman, absolutely. Atomic Blonde? I think you're going to see Wonder Woman nominated for an Academy Award for Best Picture. Go Don't ahead. you think it deserves that? Oh, heck yeah. How about Patty Jenkins? Absolutely. She'll okay. get a nomination Direct as well. Good for her. My Wi-Fi locked up, so dis discuss amongst yeah. yourselves while we're okay. So, uh, one of the funny things is I don't get to watch a lot of movies just because I'm busy with kids. Um, so I try and watch them, watch it in pieces late at night. Okay. But one of the things I remember, Mark, you kept talking about was The Accountant, right? That movie with, uh, with uh, what's his face? Accountant. Um, yeah, you know, with Ben Affleck. Yeah, with Ben Affleck. When, when did I, I talk about this? This was years ago. <laughs> about how much I hated it? Yeah, exactly. Okay. And so my brother-in-law, Chris, he loved that movie. And so for so Thanksgiving, I hadn't even seen the movie, but I was defending your view of it like, no, it's <laughs> to good. my brother-in-law years after it came out. This so just so you know, what you say sticks with us Every for better or for worse People years hang on. later. Except when you talk to his wife, though, you'd be surprised. You would think that his wife, because he probably talks so much about movies, <laughs> she's just removed from it altogether. Uh -huh. And I feel like you've said that before, that your wife isn't really into movies. Well, I had a chance to, <laughs> to meet her on New Year's Eve. She's into movies, Mark. Oh. And she doesn't like the same movies you like. Only to the, she's only interested in movies <laughs> when dissing my opinion <laughs> about anything. She was like, oh no, Shape of Water, terrible, uh, like not believable, didn't like it. And you're over here like, oh, it's a magical film. <laughs> so it's all an opinion, but you're the movie expert, so I'm going to say that I'll probably like it. I think you'll like it. I'll show you someone who uh, definitely, 
Who's this? See that guy? That guy loved Shape of Water. Oh, it's a mirror. No, I don't. <laughs> <laughs> He's like, I was trying TV? to figure out a way to get the steady cam off because I wanted to talk to you about it. But tell them why they should love Shape of Water. This is DJ, DJ everybody. DJ, everybody. Hello. Yeah, it's a great love story. Br uh, great, a, a great movie to bring um, a, uh, a date movie. Oh, the, even though it involves a, falling in love with a Yeah, monster? falling in love with a fish man? Uh, I mean, I, I wouldn't choose. That wouldn't be my cup of tea, but, I mean, you watch the movie. <laughs> no, I'm not asking about your dating <laughs> He's like, bring a date. Well, I wouldn't, but you should. <laughs> I'm not into fish men. I stay away from men with wow. gills, however. That's what some. you call someone changing their opinion in the moment, which is like a normal human thing. So we right. all do it. So, DJ, thank you for your input Thanks for your input, DJ. I was trying to figure out, I'm thinking, how do I get the steady cam up, DJ? Uh, that was good. Looking here. Sure. That's awesome. How about Mark Willis? We always see him in the cars with you because he's <laughs> photojournalized. What's your favorite Willis? movie of 2017? But, but come over here. So come on up. You. Hey, What's everybody. It's Mark Willis. Camera guy Mark. Uh, the hey, other Mark. Hey, I need a microphone. Where's my mic? Over right. here. Right here. He's the sports. Okay. You know, he does the movies. sports. Movies you've seen. I've only seen like. Very few because I'm. Because you're a dad. Did you see the disaster yeah. artist? Who no. Wants, like, I've seen Jumanji. I really like Jumanji. Is that considered 2017? Yeah, but yeah. Not, not not Academy Award fodder. Okay. <laughs> but what about Get Out? Did you see Get Out? I did see Get Out. Okay. So good. Did you like it? Yeah. It, I, I caught on to it. Yeah. Wait, I feel while. like you didn't really like it. Did I love it? No, it's, it scared me a little bit. It's, it's <laughs> kind of scary. Yeah, it's a good one. If you haven't seen it, there's a great twist to it. It's so good. Did you see I Sonya? No. Oh, oh I so hear this is going to be. Uh, what kind of kid movies are, are available? Okay, there are no kid those. movies right now. But I will say this. This is an example of we talk about how silly it is that they split them up into music mm -hmm. or comedy. Yeah. I, yeah. Tanya, the Nancy Kerrigan story, is in the musical or comedy. Category. Musical? Uh, but is it, do they do this because they want a better chance at getting an award? So, like, The Martian, I don't know if it's drama enough, so we'll go the comedy side. Like, who on the back end determines if it is funny enough to be a comedy? Right. Or now if it's musical enough? I didn't even know this was a music. Like, how is that possible? It, there are some funny moments in it, some right. naturally occurring funny moments, but I wouldn't consider it a comedy by, like you said, Mars last yeah. year. Comedy? What? Yeah. I do like the fact, though, that, you know, some movies, they're not, it's not the best acting, it's not the best story, it's just really funny. So yeah. I like the fact that there's a category specifically for comedies, right. because they should be honored. I mean, that's a big reason why people go to the movies, because right. you want to laugh. Okay. So it should be honored, because people that are talented at that, they should, they should so be able to get an award. How does so this list, right? <laughs> <or comedy? laughs> that's what we're still trying to figure out, right? right. But, but this is for the Golden Globes this weekend, is that what we're looking at? Yes. Okay, so it's best motion picture. Or comedy right there. Disaster artist, get out. The greatest showman. You well liked? deserved. Yeah, it's, it's, okay. it's definitely a musical. You but felt, you felt sorry for the disaster artist this. guy, didn't you? I did. The disaster artist is supposed to make fun of this guy who made, in real life, the worst movie ever. By the end of that movie, you're sympathetic. Okay. You want him to win. I love that. <laughs> Best performance by an actress in a motion picture drama. So Sally Hawkins, she shaped Shape of Water, the one who had to learn American Sign Language, ASL, yeah. in order to perform in this. She doesn't speak one word, Not right? one word in the movie, and a great That's monologue via me. sign language. That deserves an award, although... Sacktown's own Jessica Chastain. We, okay. Mm -hmm. We love some Jessica Chastain. Frances McDormand is in that Three Billboards movie that I told you about. Okay. And uh, great performance. I didn't dig the movie so much. Meryl Streep's good in the post, but... She could phone it in. So what do you think about Daniel Day-Lewis? Because, you know, the talk is that this will be his last movie. He's going to go into retirement. So it, it, would they consider his work for this movie or as, you know, as a whole, as a little send-off? Mm, right, he may a, have hey, a we're sorry about all the other times. <laughs> yeah. Here you go. Do you Golden think, like, that, that gives him an edge because of uh, this may be his, his last movie? Maybe. My predictions for that category this year with the Golden Globes especially is Gary Oldman, and I think you'll see that reflected in the Academy Awards. Okay. Too. Okay, Gary. For Darkest Hour. Okay, the best performance by an actress in a motion picture. Margot Robbie, I, Tanya. Do you think she'll take it? No, but okay. she was very, very good in that I movie. hear she was really good. So who in this category? I mean, we want. Sersha. I think it's going to be her. We're going to go I do Saoirse. think she's going to get that. Okay, so Lady Bird, we're going to hopefully see an award this, yeah. this weekend. Golden and Globes maybe on it will carry through to the Academy. Oh. I, I, a lot of these are professional photos, and then you get to... Uh, <laughs> Steve the, the, uh, uh uh, Anst uh, Ansel? Yeah, Ansel, and that's just like his driver's license photo. <laughs> oh, poor Ansel. It, cool. it almost looks mugshot-esque. Yeah. And then you have Hugh Jackman where it's like, really? Yeah. <laughs> the bow tie? Like, of course. Well, again, the help <laughs> is that he's in a musical or comedy, and how many musicals came out last year? Right. <laughs> One? Well, now, I, Tanya, you said, is going to be in that category? Well, in the music, yeah. It's, it, 
they're counting it as a, a, a comedy. A comedy, not musical. Okay. Um, uh, Daniel Kaluuya, that's how you pronounce it. Yeah, the he's name? your lead in Get Out. That, Great okay. job in that movie. Great job in that movie. I don't know. That's a tough one. Yeah, I would love to see him win for that. And supporting actress, who do we have here? Octavia Spencer. You chatted with her, Shape of Water. You think yes. she'll take it? Mary J. I mean, she had to completely strip herself down and become very non Mary J in order to play her, her role. Right? That category right there, I guarantee you it's between Laurie Metcalf and Lady Bird and, Lady and Mary Bird J. Blige. And Mary J. I, I kind of cool think Mary J. J. might take it. If Mary J gets it, then she is, uh, does she have, I assume she has a, a Grammy, Grammy, right? Yeah, okay, so one step closer to the, is it EGOT or EGOT? EGOT, <laughs> EGOT right Emmy, Grammy, <laughs> Oscar, Tony. Quite, Very quite cool. It. Okay, let's see, actor, supporting role. Um, what, are we, what are you predicting, Mark? I, I would love to see Christopher Plummer get it, and let me tell you why. Christopher Plummer is 88 years old. Mm -hmm. Ridley Scott had a dilemma because the Kevin Spacey thing went down. Right. Uh. He was four way, Four weeks away from, you know, opening his movie. It was done. Mm -hmm. And he said, you know what? We're going to reshoot it. They reshot over half the movie. 23 scenes involving the whole cast. Pulled Mark Wahlberg and Michelle Williams out of their Thanksgiving break. In nine days, Christopher Plummer memorized the script, shot it. Fifteen days later, it was ready to re-release. That it, as a Christopher Plummer. That's probably movie. never as been done before Plummer to that movie. degree, right? I, I mean, and he's 88. Wow. I can't remember what we did two minutes ago in this show. <laughs> and he was like, I got to go out with a bang on this one because <laughs> if he didn't reshoot this film, right, then it just would have been dead, right? Because if it's a Weinstein produced film, oh wow. So I, that's I, I'd an love interesting for him story. to win. I think he deserves it. Okay, and then here's the director role. This is a uh, motion picture. The fact that there are no women, are we surprised with that? A little bit. I would have liked to have seen Wonder Woman. Uh, yeah, Patty in the Jenkins. Globes. We don't I'm see her I'm shocked that it didn't get nominated, and I'm shocked that she's not up there. I'm shocked that Greta Gerwig's not up there. But best screenplay, we do see some Greta. Yeah. Very cool, Greta. How awesome would that be? We're just wet. this is going to be the coolest moment if this happens and Lady Bird starts to get on the map, then Sack gets on the map, and then mm -hmm. that's just that's just good for us. I just mm -hmm. love seeing her up there with Aaron Sorkin. Aaron Sorkin, one of the greatest playwright screenplay writers of all time, next to our own Greta Gerwig, yeah. and she's probably going to take it. Wow. Oh, that's going to be awesome, Coco, my Coco. Best motion picture animated. We think that's going to win, right? It's got it. Okay. It's done. Yeah. What are, what are you guys check. saying? Let's see. Reggie Cepeda, good morning, David. Uh, Joe says his fave is Baby Driver, Three Billboards Outside, Ebbing, Missouri, and Logan Lucky. Okay. Baby <laughs> Driver's the only one I've, um, no, I haven't seen that. <laughs> you know, sometimes you look at it and you look, oh, wait, I've seen that. No, I haven't. On behalf of the producers of Logan Lucky, thanks for being the person that liked it. <laughs> really? No yeah. one likes it? It's a little. Joe, <laughs> you must have interesting taste. Yeah, Joe's the wait, one waving over wait, there. Wait, did you like it too? That's the one. That's Joe, who I'm referring to. <laughs> wait, who, who wrote it Joe. here? This is Joe. This is Joe. Oh, Joe chimed in here and there. Yeah, yeah. So, Joe, do you want to come defend it for a moment? Okay. Well, Logan Lucky. And Chris Next. Hooks. Wait, wait, wait. Mm -hmm. We have another one of ours chiming in. See, when we can get our own digital team to be so interested that they're actually they're chiming engaged. in. Wow. He says, one, get out. Two Star Wars, three Logan, four Dunkirk, and then five uh, The Big Sick. Joe, okay. I love Channing Tatum. I, I, I'm going to get uncomfortably close to you because I have a microphone and you don't. So I go ahead and speak Tatum. up. Thank you. I thought Daniel Craig was great in it, but you really liked the movie overall. Yeah, I thought it was awesome. It was just so silly and like a, just a funnier version of Ocean's Eleven and like a good heist movie. Right? A good Which heist movie. We okay. don't get very often. I'll tell you some moments that I do remember that you'll like. So Adam Driver from Star Wars is in it, and he has he's missing an arm. And his paraplegic arm at some point gets tossed into a wood chipper yeah. by accident. <laughs> See, it's all There's in what you find funny, what you find. So it's interesting. Have you been this challenged? I feel like this year <laughs> you've been tough challenged. Year. Because of social media, everyone's talking. So here's okay, Chris, so who we were talking about. Yeah. Chris, did you like Logan Lucky? I have not seen it. You oh, okay. Logan what are you here to champion? But not Logan Lucky. Uh, my top five is one of them is Dunkirk, and I feel like not a lot of people like Dunkirk. I loved it. I thought the cinematography uh, was amazing. I'm going to see that this weekend. Right? It was just like, it was so compelling, and there were like 50 lines of dialogue throughout the entire movie. Mm. And it was just like, so visually stunning, and I'm just watching it at... I think I saw it at Tower Theater. Right. I was watching it like, oh my God, this is just like great. Um, you don't hear Harry Styles and acting in the same sentence very all. often. Yeah. Um, and then obviously Get Out was amazing. Um, and then Star Wars coming, you know, 
out of nowhere. Well, not really out of nowhere, but <laughs> right uh, at the end of 2017. And, you you know. mentioned, Mark, when, when movies come out late in the game, what is considered li like late and maybe too late? Well, once you're into December, you're on the tail of, of <laughs> right. having to. If it yeah. doesn't have buzz by December, let alone open wide by December, you might have some issues. But yeah. Star Wars is different because there's so much anticipation. Right. And conversely, I think Get Out would have, I think it would, I think it has a strong chance. I'd love to see Jordan Peele win, yeah. but yeah. don't you think they should have held on to it a little bit? They opened it, it a little too soon? I, I don't think that, I, I can't remember. Was it the Golden Globes that gave them uh, a comedy nod, or was that the uh, Academy yeah. Awards? Golden Globes. Golden Globes. I think that's not right i think it should agreed be a comedy. it's a much more important uh, film than that no, yeah that's what threw me off and that's why i say there was a twist because i've been fed one thing i feel like going like, into it if you want to put it in because they don't they don't do horror stuff which is what i guess you would categorize it as but as a horror film it's just so much more than drama. that to where i would put it in a drama category yeah. where i would probably take out something like the shape of water which Ooh. You didn't like Shape of Water? I haven't seen it yet. Oh, okay. <laughs> See Shape of Water. See but Shape of Water. But I just, I mean, three movie, take out three billboards. <laughs> I haven't seen that yet either, but I have heard a lot of mixed reviews, so I would probably say that. In uh, terms of message. Wait, we have Drew Fowler, another one of our very own. I, I love it. all this. Hi, Drew. Go see Columbus, tiny but beautiful little independent movie. He's been championing that film since the day it opened. Really? Yeah. See, see, people, are they get behind movies, and they're not always going to agree with the Marcus Allen, but you've had a chance to chat with the stars. So I, I see your list, and I, I hold on to it. By the time the Academy <laughs> Awards roll around, my predictions are usually right, and I'd love to see Jordan get something. I, I, I know he's going to get a nomination, because like you said, yeah. but not only is it not a comedy, culturally, it's one of the most important films of the century. And just to remind our viewers, director of Get Out? Of Get Out. Get out. Okay, Jordan Pill. All right, everyone. We are out of time. Thank you, Jordan, hey, for joining. It was me 30. and the boys today. <laughs> nice. Thank you. Definitely. Where are my girls at? Thank you, everyone, for chiming in as well. David Wong, good morning. Reggie Cepeda. Uh, let's see. I can go on and on with all of you who are here with us today. Don't forget to watch Rob. You have Mark and the Walt Gray coming up at 9. All right, everyone. Have a good one. See you Thanks, later. Thanks, team.